Oh, man, what joy in the house at welcoming uh, new members into the, uh, into the congregation. My goodness. This morning is one of my favorite Sundays of the entire year. Every January, we have at least one of those Sundays where I, I preach on vision. Uh, the vision that the Lord has given us, we believe the Lord has given us here at the Rock Church. Today, I want to approach that a little bit differently. I just feel a message that the Lord is rising up in my heart. I want to, I want to talk with you. I want to share some thoughts from the Word, something the Lord's given me, in a message entitled, God's Vision, Your Dream. God's vision, your dream, and then I'm going to roll into the vision of the Rock Church at the, at the end, but, but I really feel like there's some individuals that need to hear this personally this morning. If, if, if you've ever given up on a dream, I want you to hear what God's saying to you this morning. If you've ever given up on a dream, I want you to hear what God's saying to you this morning. I'm going to read four short passages of Scripture. I've chosen these because they, say that they, they give the whole story, so, so bear with me. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 through 3. The Lord said to Abraham, Go from your country, your people, and your father's house to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Then fast forward to Genesis 15, 1 through 6. After this, that is, there's some interlude there, some things that goes on in Abraham and Lot and all of that. After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. But Abram said, Sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless and the one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer of Damascus? That's his servant. And Abram said, You've given me no children. So a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him, This man will not be your heir, but a son who is your own flesh and blood will be your heir. He took him outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. Abram believed the Lord, and it credited it to him as righteousness. Then fast forward to Genesis 21, verse 1. Now, the Lord was gracious to Abram, uh, to Sarah. I like how the New King James Version says there, and the Lord remembered Sarah. And the Lord was gracious to Sarah, and he said, and the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abram in, Abraham in his old age. At that very time, God had promised him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to the son Sarah bore him. When his son Isaac was eight, day, eight days old, Abraham circumcised him as God had commanded. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. And Sarah said, God has brought me laughter, and everyone who hears about this will laugh with me. And she added, who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children, yet I have borne him a son in his old age. Father, I thank you and I praise you this morning for the power of vision and dream when they come from you. I pray that this morning you would captivate our minds, our attentions. Let us focus, Lord, on what you are saying, what you are speaking into our lives and into our hearts this morning. I pray that you would do something incredible. Lord, I pray especially for individuals that may be here or online or may hear this that have given up on a dream. I pray, Lord, that you'll speak a word of life to them this morning from your word and by your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Editor's note real quick. I know the handouts are a little something different. It's something I feel like uh, would help some individuals. Some people, I think, can, uh, are, have been asking, can you, can you do some notes and things? If you're not one of those, don't get distracted by that, but they're there if you need them. You'll see there's some fill-in-the-blank portions, uh, and it'll be something that you can, can carry with you. So a teacher, I don't know, maybe first grade, second grade or so, she, she asked the question, it's a normal question, she asked the question, what do, we, what do you want to be when you grow up? And uh, man, the, 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 the children just started popping up. I want to be a fireman. I want to be, uh, you know, I want to be a chef. I want to be a banker. I, I want to be a football star. Uh, I, I want to be a teacher. I mean, they just were popping them off, popping off. And, and Jake... Little Jake said, I want to be possible. 
And she said, well, what do you mean you want to be possible? He said, my mama tells me I'm impossible. When I grow up, I want to be possible. <laughs> Anybody can identify this morning. Here's what I want you to know. God makes the impossible possible. God makes the impossible possible, and he does it through vision and a dream. I want us to look back at that story, and I want to point out some things that may be obvious, but it's for the sake of the conversation this morning. I just want to point them out to you uh, again this morning. And then I'm going to apply those things to, to, to our lives personally. First of all, first thing that you've got to know this morning is that Abraham had, I'm sorry, God had a vision for Abraham. In fact, I like that in the 15th chapter, that's what, he, that's what he says. God visited Abraham in a vision. I love that God had a vision for Abraham. It's a vision to make him a great nation. Uh, now, now remember, you got to remember who Abraham was. Abraham was just a nomad. Uh, he was just a wanderer. He wandered from place to place to place. And, and, and when God said, pick up root, he'd go. He was just a, he was just a, 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 a shepherd. He raised cattle. He raised sheep. Uh, he was nobody of no, no one of nobility. And yet God said, I'm going to make a great nation of you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make you a blessing. I'm going to bless those that bless you. I'm going to curse those that curse you. And all the people of the earth are going to be blessed through you. Have, come on, somebody. Talk about a vision. Bring it on, God, right? <laughs> uh, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make, you, make your name blessed. I'm going to make, make you a blessing. Uh, not only am I going to make you a blessing, those that curse you will I'll curse, those that bless you are blessed, and every single nation on earth is going to be blessed by you. You cannot lose sight of the fact that God had a vision for Abraham. God had a vision for Abraham. Lost in that sometimes is the fact that Abraham had a dream for a son. Abraham had a dream for a son. You know this from what, God, from what Abraham says to God. When God gives him the vision, Abraham says this, what can you give me? Can, can, I, can, I, can I just, can I paraphrase that? What can you give me? I don't, I don't even have a son. What was, what was there was this, this desire for Abraham to have a child, a son of his own. It was, our culture cannot even remotely relate to the fact how important it was in that culture for him to have a son that could carry on his name and could carry on the heritage. He, Abraham was at a place where, where, this, uh, where this was going to have to be carried on by his servant. In fact, when God first spoke to Abraham, he was 75 years old. He was 75 years old. And God said, Eliezer will not be, Eliezer will not be your hair, not, not be your heir, not be your... You see, God, God gave a vision to Abraham. God had a vision for Abraham. Abraham had a dream for a son. Now, here's the thing. Abraham had given up on his dream. And I just have a sense this morning there are some under the sound of my voice, whether it's online, whether it's watching it later, whether it's here, there may be a dream in your life that you have given up on. And I just, I want... I want I want to say to you this morning, that is a common, that is a common thing in life, giving up on a dream, giving up on a dream. And we hear this because Abraham had already, it was a foregone conclusion to him. I mean, I mean, he was 75 years old, Ben, he's not having a son, right? And most of us would say, amen. <laughs> God, God, gave, God gave children to us at the right time of life because at 75 years old, he'd kill you, right? The, the thing is, God had a vision for Abraham. Abraham had a dream for a son, but Abraham had given up on his son. He was already 75 years old. He had already accepted this is not going to happen. I'm too old. Too much life has gone past. Too much, too much has happened. I physically can't have a son. I emotionally can't have a son. I mentally can't have a son. There's just no way he had completely given up on his dream. The good news is this. God, watch this. God, watch this. God intersected his vision for Abraham, which was what? To bless you, to make your name blessed, to, to make you a blessing, to curse those who curse you and bless those who bless you, to make every nation on earth, all people on earth, bless through you, through your blood. Watch this. He, God intersected his vision 
for Abraham and Abraham's dream for himself. Abraham's dream was for all intents and purposes dead except that God intersected, watch this, his vision for Abraham with Abraham's dream. And I want to tell you when that happens, watch this, when God intersected uh, his vision with Abraham's dream, he intended to fulfill it and so he intersected them by, by, with Abraham's vision of having a dream. And then watch this, and then watch this. When God's vision which was alive, God never gives up on his vision. Listen to me. God never gives up on his vision for you. The vision he has for your life, the vision he has for your marriage, the vision he has for your, young, for your uh, teenagers, the vision he has for your finances, your business. God never gives up on his vision. Sometimes we give up on the dream, right? Sometimes we give up on the dream, but I have a good news for you. If, you. if you stay in touch with God and you'll keep listening to God, God can take his vision, which is alive, and your dream, which may be dead, and where the two intersect, the impossible can be made possible. It was, let's be clear about this, it was impossible for Abraham at 100 years old now it was impossible for Abraham to have a child. It was impossible for Sarah at 90 years old now to have a child, except that God hadn't given up on his vision. Time didn't matter to God in his vision. Circumstance didn't matter to God in his vision. Physical situation didn't matter to God in his vision. What mattered is where God would, Abraham allow God to intersect his vision with Abraham's dead dream. And Genesis 15 and 6 says, and Abraham believed. He trusted God. He believed that God's vision was bigger, a live vision was bigger than his dead dream. And it was accounted unto him as righteousness. Hebrew says this. Hebrew says that Abraham counted his body as good as dead. Abraham counted his body as good as dead. And yet, uh, he trusted God. He believed God. Abraham wasn't denying the situation. Abraham wasn't denying what was happening. What Abraham was doing, Abraham was admitting. He fully was aware of the impossibility of it. But he knew this. He knew that if God had a vision for him, his dream could come alive. He knew that if God had a vision for him, there would be a way that he could make it happen. He knew that if God had a vision for him, somehow it, it would come to pass. Sarah laughed. In fact, I love, I love the scripture. You should, you should just read the scripture sometime and just read it literally. Not try to necessarily interpret everything. There in, I believe it's in Genesis 15. The angels come, remember, and they say to Sarah, a year from now you're going to have a child. And Sarah, they say that to Abraham. Sarah hears it and she laughs. Remember? And the angel says to Sarah, I heard you laugh. She said, I didn't laugh. He said, oh, no, you laughed. <laughs> yeah, that's what it, oh, no, you laughed. Listen to me. God ever told you something you laughed at? Let's just be real, right? There's no way that could happen. I'm too old. I can't be used. I don't have that talent. I don't have that gift. Who am I that he could? Anybody, anybody besides Sarah and me that there's sometimes God says something to you. Laugh. Listen, when God tells you something that you're tempted to laugh at, it's the point where God is about to intersect his vision with your dream. And when he intersects his vision with your dream, it's going to be more than to laugh at. It's going to be something to shout and to sing out, which is what Sarah says happens in the end. Sarah laughed, but everybody rejoiced with her in the end because God intersected his vision with Abraham's dream. Wow. I'm, I'm talking about real life, right? Right where, we, right where we live. You see, the key point is this. The key point is this. When God's vision for Abraham intersected Abraham's dream for the impossible, then the impossible became possible. Abraham, 100 years old. Sarah, 90 years old. Isaac, newborn. Let me read that statement again. Abraham, 100 years old. Sarah, 90 years old. Isaac, newborn. Right? The impossible becomes possible. Oh, my goodness, the power when a vision from God intersects a dream in our heart. The power that that releases inside of you. I just, I, I don't want to get, I, I don't want to get too deep in the weeds here, but you understand when that, when that, 
vision of God intersected the dream of Abraham, something physically happened inside of their bodies. They physically could not have children, but something physically and emotionally and mentally and spiritually happened inside of them. Life came in that moment. This was clearly an act of grace and of life on God's part. Abraham had given up on his dream. God had not given up on his vision. And when God brought the dream and the vision together, the impossible became possible. Abraham, 100 years old. Sarah, 90 years old. Isaac, newborn. Wow. So what is that, what, 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 what is that in our lives? How does that happen in our lives? I have a sense this morning that there's some individuals, there may be some individuals this morning that you've given up on a dream. There's no physical way, there's no relational way, there's no economic way. But do you, do you have a dream that just still won't go away? I want to talk to you a minute. Is, is there something in your heart, something you know? Mm. Something that you know is impossible, but it still just won't go away. Something that you know can't, that's just when the way that you look at it still can't come to it. It just, it's still there. It's still in your heart. Do you, do, you, do you have a dream or something? If that's you this morning, I'm going to speak to you this morning. I want to give you four practical things just real quickly. Four practical steps or four practical applications. If that's you this morning, if God, if you have a dream that just seems it just will not go away and it's almost dead, but you know God's possible, I want to, I want, to, I want to speak to you four things real quickly this morning is this. One is this. Understand that God has a vision for you. Understand that God has a vision for you. I believe this with all of my heart. God has a vision for every single person in this place. God has a vision for your life. God has a vision for your marriage. God has a vision for your workplace. God has a vision for your neighborhood. God has a vision for your family. God has a vision for your children. God has a vision for every single person this morning. You have the spirit of life of Christ inside of you. You have the breath of life inside of you. Understand that God has a vision for you. Never, listen, no matter what happens to your dream, always hold on to the fact that God has a vision for you. Understand that God has a vision for you. Say it with me. God has a vision for me. Come on, say it again. God has a vision for me. The second thing is this. And this is where we lose it sometimes. Recognize your dream. Recognize your dream. I think a lot of people are setting on dreams and they don't realize it is a dream. I have finished this sentence. Finish this sentence and it'll give you a clue to your dream. One day I want to. Yeah, what? Yeah. Hey, man, I buy into that dream, right? Yes. One day I want to. Right there, whatever in your heart follows that, whatever feels in that line is a clue to a dream that you have in your heart, right? It's a clue to something. One day I want to. That's a dream that is out there. Maybe one day I want to feed the homeless. One day I want to um, lead a company. One day I want to be a teacher. One day I want to be a mother. One day I want to what? what I, one day I want to. It's a clue to a dream in your heart. Listen, I'm telling you, there is power when we dream. God uses dreams and God puts dreams in our hearts. So understand that God has a vision for you. Recognize your dream. The third thing is this. Look for intersections of God's vision and your dream. <clears throat> oh, my goodness. Look for those intersections of God's vision and your dream. Because I'm telling you, those are power points. Those are, those are points at which the power of God is about to be released in your life. If you, as Abraham did, believed God, trusted God, counted on God, regardless of what the situation was. Look for those places where, where the, the intersection of God's vision and your dream come together. You, you understand, don't you? I'll, just, I'll go to this one. If, if you have this dream of, of helping uh, older people in your neighborhood, you do understand, don't you, that there is an intersection of that 
in God's vision for the world. God's vision for the world is that his love can be shown to every single person. So that dream is not just a, it's not just a dream. That There's an intersection. Where does that intersection for God's vision, for his love to be shown to people, and your dream of being able to care for older people, where do those intersect? Because where those intersect is a place where the impossible can become possible in your life. Amen? Look for those places. I don't think we look. I don't think we recognize our dreams, and I don't think we look for those places that they intersect together. What we try to do is we try to fulfill the, vision, the dream without God's vision. The life, the life is not in my dream. The life is in God's vision. And when his vision intersects my dream, then life comes to the dream. Right? Understand God has a vision for you. Recognize your dream. Look for intersections of God's vision and your dream. And then the fourth thing is this. Pursue the connections where your dream and God's visions meet. Pursue the connections where your dream and God's vision meets. What I, what I mean by that is there are, there are some places. God will, I believe this with my heart, in 2023, God's going to give you new connecting points, new points at where his vision and your dream are con- going to connect together. And you've got to understand that that's a vision from God. You've got to recognize your dream. You've got to look for those. And when you look for those, you've got to pursue those. Listen, I believe God's giving opportunity for your dream to come alive again in 2023. Why? Because it's connected in some way to his vision for you. And when our dream and God's visions are connected, that's the place where the impossible becomes possible. Now, that's what the whole message is about this morning. When God's vision and your dream meet, the impossible becomes possible. And this morning, I just, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll in and speak for a moment about the, the vision of the Rock Church and how it relates to this. But before I do, I want to speak to you personally this morning. And I want to say it again. I believe in my heart there are people sitting in these pews, watching online, watching it this week, that you've given up on a dream. And 2023 is the year, if you will understand God hasn't given up on his vision, if you will begin to recognize God's dream for your life, if you'll begin to look for those intersections and then pursue them when they come, I believe 2023 is the year God will bring your dream back alive by infusing it with his vision for your life. I believe that, and I believe you're going to see it if you walk as Abraham did and believe God as he did. Amen? That's good news, right? My dream might, listen, my dream might seem dead, but God's vision is still alive, and his vision brings life to my dream. Amen? Amen. Dreams and visions and this connection happen within organizations and businesses and churches too. And here at the Rock Church, the way that we have given given, uh, verbiage to that, what we believe is God's vision for the Rock Church. And, and, and here it is. Most of you will know it by now. Loving God, sharing life, finding hope. As I was preparing this message and, and getting ready to preach today, it, um, I reflected some on how this came about. And for those that don't, that don't know the story, we, we spent a year. When I say we, a team of about 26 individuals, the leaders in the church, spent a year just praying, searching the scripture, talking, throwing stuff on whiteboards, uh, throwing stuff on big, we had post-it notes. I wowed them with post-it notes. It was about this big. And we just shared and we thought and we wrote and we rewrote and we prayed and we wrote some more. And in order to get a clear picture of what God is saying to us, what we need to be in this community. And this statement, loving God, sharing life and finding hope. It, it's, it, it's that picture. That in a sentence is the picture of what we believe God is wanting us to do. But as I was pondering through that this year, have, have you considered, have you thought that we did this work in 2019? We rolled it out in February of 2020. And then March happened. And the pandemic happened. And the world changed forever. An integral part. Get to think about this. I just want you to get what's, what I'm saying here. An integral part, and I'll share a little more about it in a minute, is, is about sharing life. Do, do you understand how threatened that was? I, it, there, it was, we went through these extreme um, uh, hoops of trying to stay connected and sharing life with each other. And, and it would have been easy. 
it would have been easy to just kind of to throw up our hands uh, with these changes that were there. And in fact, I'm, I'm told by people that study this and are much, more, uh, much brighter than I am, that the changes that happened in 2020 and 2021, those changes are deep societal changes, the effects of which we will be feeling for decades and may not even have to figure out for de- decades to come how deep-seated the changes are. But I want you to know something this morning. <laughs> but God still intends to fulfill his vision, regardless of the challenges, regardless of the changes, regardless of the deep-seated societal shift. God still intends to fulfill his vision through us of us loving God, sharing life, and finding hope. God still intends to fulfill his vision. And I believe part of the power of that is where his vision and our dreams intersect. His vision and our dreams intersect. I'll tell one, I'll tell one story because it's dear to all of us. Ben, have I, ben and I have talked about this at times, and, and he's given me permission to share this when, when, when it's appropriate. Carrie, Ben's wife, who passed away in 2020, she was part of that vision team. And her heart beat to serve the helpless and the homeless and the hurting. Her heart beat to serve the helpless and the homeless and the hurting. That was her dream. And as we would sit around and brainstorm during these things, you could, you, could, those, those, you, could, you could hear her heart just coming out in the midst of that over and over and over again. And then, and then for reasons that we will, we will not understand this side of heaven, God took Carrie home in uh, uh, July, I believe it was, of, of 2020. But I, I want to tell you something. That dream is still alive. That dream is still alive. In fact, that is the reason that as soon as we were able, at the end of last year, we picked that dream back up and began to, and, and went to the homeless and did the, the, whole, the whole giveaway and the presence and, the, uh, and, and, all, and helping and, and going to the homeless shelter. We, we, but listen, we didn't, the life of that wasn't Carrie's dream. The life of that is where God's vision for the homeless, God's heart for the homeless, God's heart for the hurting, God's heart for the desperate, God's heart for the outcast, where that intersected with Carrie's dream and the Rock Church's dream of, fi- of helping people to find hope. Uh, that is a place where life, uh, listen, even though the circumstances were desperate, even though much of it we didn't understand, you understand that God's vision and our dream intersects and there is life regardless of the challenges or the changes that may come. Amen? H- hear me this morning. I want you to hear me. You are here for a purpose. You are here at the Rock Church for a purpose. Do not underestimate how important your purpose here is. God, yes, God wants to do something in you. And yes, God wants to do something for you. But you understand in that equation, we're just consumers God not only wants to do something in you and for you, God wants to do something through you. And you move from being a consumer to being the hands and the heart and the feet and the life of Jesus Christ. And that is what loving God and sharing life and finding hope is really all about. See, let me just, let me just expand just for a moment. Ginger's going to come. I'm going to pull this down. I just let me expand for just a moment on these three statements so that you can get a better idea of what, what this is about. Loving God is the foundational strength of our church. You understand, don't you, that loving God gives power and purpose to everything we do at the Rock Church. Everything we do. Loving God gives power and purpose to everything we do. It's, it's why we do what it's what motivates us. It's, it's, it's why we come here on Sunday mornings. It's why uh, we do outreach. It's why um, we call each, uh, uh, you know, and, and check on people. It's why, it's why I preach. It's why we do worship. Loving God is the foundational strength of our church. It gives power and purpose to everything we do. Without it, nothing of eternal value or significant happens without loving God. Sharing life. 
Sharing life is the nature of the community of our church. I, I, want to, I, I say it from time to time. I, I promise you say it every Sunday because somebody is probably here every Sunday that feels this way. But listen, you do not have to do life alone. You are not meant to do life alone. You were meant to do life alongside brothers and sisters of Christ in a community of Christ. And so the nature of our, of our church is one of sharing life together. It's why we do, we do life together, not just ministry. We do life together. And then finally, finding hope. Finding hope is the outworking, the outworking of God's vision for our church. To bring hope into lives and into our world. It works its way out, right? Out of these walls, beyond these doors, beyond our lives, beyond, beyond us four and no more. It's the outwork in God's vision for our church to bring hope into our lives and into our world. Loving God, sharing life, finding hope. Loving God, sharing life, finding hope. So here's my prayer for you and my prayer for us. And I hope that you'll make your prayer this year in regards to vision. It is that you will ask God. To renew his vision for you, the dream that he put in your heart, and then to ask him where that intersects, where that intersects with the vision of the Rock Church. I, I look around, and I, I don't dare begin to call names and point out, but I look around, and I see some of you that are at you're living your dream. You're, you're seeing your dreams come to pass. But I see an individual after individual after individual. I see where that is intersecting with the vision of the Rock Church. I, I, I will do, I, I, will, I will call that one. Take Ted and Yvonne Miller, for example. Their dream, all their life is to pastor. Pastored 50 years. 50 years. Retired about two or three years ago. Right? He's been busier than since, <laughs> since he retired, right? And part of what they do, because they love people, part of what they do, they've always had a dream of helping people, just touching people's lives. Last year, that dream of theirs intersected with God's vision for the Rock Church, for us to be loving God, sharing life, and finding hope. And God's begun to use them to be our visitation pastors here and to touch lives in a way that we've never been able to before because one person simply can't do it all. And I look around the congregation and I see nurses and I see accountants and I see school teachers and I see retired individuals. I see counselors. Can I tell you, every one of those points is a place where God, your dream and God's vision can intersect and something powerful can happen in ways that none of us, that could never have happened otherwise. So my prayer is that we'll recognize God's vision. We'll remember our dreams. And we will see where God is connecting those in a meaningful way so that we can indeed be a group of people who are loving God, sharing life, finding hope together, not only in our lives, by helping others to find hope as well. Amen? Amen. If you want to see that happen in your life and in our church, I just want you to stand this morning. Stand with me this morning in your life and in our church. Mm. Hallelujah. Lord, we stand here this morning. We stand here this morning at this first month of 2023, and we want this to be a year, Lord, when we when we understand deep within our hearts that you have a vision for us and we recognize our dreams that Lord we don't just let them lie dormant and that we look for those places where it intersects our dreams and your vision God and that we pursue those connections and that you make the rock church in 2023 what you intended Lord when you gave us this vision in 2019 I pray Lord that it will continue to work its way out in our lives and that people will begin to discover that their gifts and their talents belong that you have a purpose you have a reason for it there's something you're going to do something you're going to Lord and that and that Lord those things that seem impossible are entirely possible Lord when we as Abraham did believe God and trust you with our dream and for you to infuse it with your vision 
and to make the impossible possible. We thank you for it. I'm believing it in lives. I'm believing it in businesses. I'm believing it in marriages and families. I'm believing it, Lord, in our community, and I'm believing in our church that the impossible become possible. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for being here this morning. I'm praying your dream, God's vision, intersect in a powerful way this week. God bless you. I love you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Go in the blessings of the Lord. God bless you. I love you.